Last summer, he escaped death after being poisoned. Now, Russian opposition figure Alexei Navalny is detained on his return to Moscow. Just how much of a challenge is Navalny to President Vladimir Putin? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Kim Vanell. International condemnation is growing over the arrest of Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny when he flew into Moscow. Navalny spent the past five months in Germany after being poisoned in an attack he says was ordered by President Vladimir Putin. Both US administrations, the UK and the European Union are calling for his immediate release. Germany has described Navalny's arrest as incomprehensible while Amnesty International accuses Russia of waging a relentless campaign against him. We'll bring in our panel of experts to discuss this further, but first, here's Rory Challen's report. It takes a particular type of person to survive a probable state-sanctioned poisoning and then return to the country you believe tried to kill you, a country where you face imminent arrest. But Alexei Navalny never gave the slightest suggestion he would do anything else. Following months of recuperation in Germany, Alexei and wife Yulia took their seats on a Moscow-bound plane from Berlin. Boy, bring us a little vodka. We're flying home, says Yulia, quoting a much-loved Russian gangster movie. It's a Navalny hallmark that he and his family make light of the many dangers they face, and what he faced was jail on arrival. He'd violated his suspended sentence by leaving Russia to receive life-saving treatment. He makes a choice as a brave man because he always pretended he is a brave man who uh, has no fear before the authorities. He has no fear of Putin. He has no fear of law and order machine. Now it's the time to prove uh, prove this claims uh, and show the deeds. That's why if he stays abroad, uh, well, he diminishes his claims of being, well, number one and brave opposition. At the airport where he was due to land, police detained members of his team and threw supporters out. Navalny's plane was then diverted to another Moscow airport away from the crowds. After landing, he spoke to the journalists who travelled with him. I am not afraid. I feel OK walking through immigration. I will pass it and go home because I know that I am right. I know that all the criminal cases against me have been forged. All these scary stories that they have tried to scare me with. It is not only the truth by my side, but also the court. But at passport control, after a goodbye kiss with his wife, police led Navalny away. The Kremlin denies the FSB had any role in last year's Novichok poisoning that nearly kills the opposition leader, but now it seems likely Russia will jail Navalny for surviving it. Rory Challens, Al Jazeera. Russia has dismissed the widespread condemnation of Navalny's arrest. Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov says Western politicians are trying to distract people from their problems at home. We can see how they've jumped at the news about Navalny returning to Russia. You can feel the joy in their carbon copy comments. Joy because Navalny's case apparently helps Western politicians think that they can now distract their citizens from the deepest crisis the liberal system has ever experienced. Navalny's case has gained foreign political resonance artificially and baselessly. Everything happening to Navalny relating to his return and detention falls within the competence of the law. Let's take a closer look now at how Navalny became one of the Kremlin's top political enemies. The 44-year-old anti-corruption campaigner has long been the most prominent face of opposition in Russia to President Vladimir Putin. In 2008, Navalny began blogging about alleged malpractice and corruption at some of the biggest state-controlled companies, including oil firms, banks and ministries. His mocking of the establishment loyal to Putin gained him millions of Russian followers on social media. In the 2011 parliamentary election, Navalny urged his supporters to vote for any party except Putin's united Russia that he says is full of crooks and thieves. 
Putin's party ended up winning, but with a much reduced majority. Navalny's also led nationwide protests against the government, but his bid to challenge Putin at the ballot box failed when he was barred from running in the 2018 presidential polls due to embezzlement charges. Navalny denies the accusation and says the case is politically motivated. Well, joining me now are our guests. In Moscow, we have Alexander Soloviev member of the Board of Open Russia, an opposition movement in London. We have Sam Green, the director of the Russia Institute at King's College London. And back in Moscow, Vladimir Sopnikov, political scientist at the Russian Academy of Sciences. A warm welcome to you all. Uh, thank you for joining us here on Inside Story. I'd like to start with you, uh, Mr. Green, if I can. Navalny knew that this would likely happen, that he would likely be uh, arrested or detained on his return to Russia. So why has he returned? What's the calculation here? Well, I think the calculation is that, first of all, you know, I think your, your report said that, that he was returning to the country that poisoned him. I think Navalny would probably dispute that and say that it was the government that poisoned him and that he claims as much right to the country as 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 Putin does. Right. So he, um, you know, is a political activist. He has. Um, you know, b become the leader of uh, you know what what remains the the, the largest and, and and most powerful independent political organization in in Russia. And so the only way that that organization contests parliamentary elections that are coming up uh, this year and continues to challenge the the Kremlin, right, is is if uh, he is there. Mr. Sodnikov, what do you think the calculation is in detaining him? Do you think that the order came all the way from the Kremlin? <laughs> No, I don't think so. Actually, I'm not uh, partly agree with uh, my uh, esteemed colleague uh, Sam because, uh, mm, first of all, the case of uh, poisoning was never proved in the, the Germany mm, uh, actually uh, delivered uh, all um, documentation, but not uh, medical cases, uh, medical medical indications that he was actually poisoned. So that we, we might call it uh, alleged uh, poisoning. Secondly, I think uh, I, um, Sam is right that. Uh, 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 Navalny is not was not going to stay as an emigre in uh, uh, Germany for good because uh, uh, he is more politician. He is a political leader uh, in Russia in his native country than just staying an emigre and just a man uh, in um, hideaway somewhere in Europe. Uh, I can see you smiling there, uh, Mr. Soloviev. Can I bring you in? Uh, what's your take on all of that? Do you think this arrest or detain order came all the way from the Kremlin? Well, I'm absolutely sure that everything which is going on in Russia, considering politics and all that stuff, is being under the Kremlin's direct control, of course. Uh, probably Kremlin does not uh, control all the details of the process, but the general uh, well order, of course, comes from there. Most of the orders uh, well might come even from Putin personally, because uh, it seems uh, that he's extremely afraid of. He's totally deprived from reality, sitting in his bunker uh, and uh, without even living it. Uh, well, just a couple of times, probably. So uh, I'm not. I, I know how that may sound, but from the other hand, uh, as long as, uh, as, as far as we see, uh, I'm absolutely sure that that was poisoning and uh, that po those poisonings started from the very beginning of the Putin's era, from the very beginning of the 2000s. Uh, and uh, they all happened just before the flight or during the flight, just because uh, it's very convenient for the assassin to uh, poison uh, a person just before the flight, because it's very difficult to uh, to provide a treatment on the flight. Uh, there are there is nothing necessary in the boat, and so the poison takes its time just to to kill a person. And it looks like just someone felt sick and uh, a very very suspicious death, but still no. Uh, no proofs, etc., and it used to happen for like 20 years, and now we see that uh, this is not even the first time. Vladimir Karamurza was poisoned twice, Petro Verzilov was poisoned, and uh, thankfully they survived. But how many people did not? 
So, mm -hmm. of course, I'm absolutely sure this super sophisticated chemical weapon is being used by the direct order of the Kremlin. Interestingly, actually, uh, Navalny himself put out a video which has been viewed more than 22 million times, which I think we have, uh, we have that video. And in it, he makes a phone call to one of the FSB agents that he says... Uh, proves that the you know basically that he's he's admitting to to playing some part in his poisoning. What do you think, uh, Mr. Green? All of this has done to Navalny, to his popularity, to the opposition. Well, I think that's what we're about to find out. Certainly, it has not put him off the fight. Right, it has probably galvanized um, uh, his. Uh, uh, a dedication uh, to to continue uh, this process of resistance in Russia, and uh, it has certainly, I think, sharpened the attention of people uh, around him, right, uh, about the the stakes. Right, I think there was a, a a long time when when people felt that you know the the, the Kremlin was was going to tolerate him to a certain degree. Uh, and we've seen the Kremlin become increasingly nervous about its ability to manage politics through, um, you know, through nuance and through nicety. And it has, um, again, sharpened its own its own edges, right? Mm. Um, the question, though, right, is really whether that matters to very many Russian people, right? So we did see, I don't know the full numbers, but hundreds, perhaps thousands of people show up yesterday at Vnukova airport. Um, they did uh, divert uh, Navalny's plane, apparently, as, as a result of that. Um, uh, and and uh, so Navalny is, is I think, both giving uh, uh, the government a chance to show its true stripes in the way that it is uh, treating him and that uh, the, the degree of, of, of anxiety uh, mm -hmm. with which they're treating this case. But they're also giving, he's giving the population and his supporters an opportunity to decide, right? Um, does it matter to them uh, what happens to, to him? And we're going to have to wait and see. Mr. Sotnikov, what do you think? Do you think Putin is nervous of Navalny, of the strengthening of opposing voices? Uh, it could be so, because uh, uh, probably uh, on the uh, coming of parliamentary elections and uh, on the uh, more uh, space for uh, President Putin to uh, uh, have uh, uh, this uh, uh, so-called zeroing of the Constitution and uh, the uh, next uh, presidential term, he might be, he might be afraid. But I think that that, that is not the case because, look, uh, and I just want to argue with Sam and uh, for Russia, first of all, this is the um, uh, matter of the um, um, internal law. And uh, uh, I, I would like to, rem to, to remind that uh, two criminal cases are still uh, hanging on, on uh, um, uh, Mr. Navalny. And uh, uh, this, uh, according to Russian law, these criminal cases should be, uh, should be, should be somehow uh, prolonged. And uh, so he, he might have a, a good chance or a bad that chance would like, uh, if, if, if you would like to, to, to hear that, uh, to be brought to um, uh, a criminal uh, court and uh, sentenced to imprisonment. Cases that he uh, says uh, are politically motivated. Yeah. Cases that he says are yeah. politically motivated. I want to bring uh, you back in, Mr. Uh, Solvyov. Um, you are a member of uh, the opposition. Is there a trend of clamping down on dissent? Are you worried for your own safety? Well, uh, of course, doing opposition politics in Russia is a dangerous thing, because doing opposition politics in any authoritarian country is a very dangerous thing. Uh, sometimes it depends on the authorities, but our authorities has proven to be uh, quite cruel and quite capable of uh, eliminating their rivals uh, and their critics. So, um, I mean, everyone are a little bit afraid. Everyone are anxious. This is normal. Nobody wants to go to jail. Nobody wants to be killed. But we just cannot uh, leave it like that. Uh, because, uh, I mean, we see that the authorities are leading our country to a disaster. Uh, and this disaster will affect every ordinary people. Those who are now in power, it wouldn't affect them. They have all their assets in Europe, in the United States, because they adore in their reality. They adore and love European countries and uh, the United States. They have uh, their property, they have their houses, their families, their children. They have even their lovers there. So uh, they will move 
uh, but we we're gonna have to uh, solve all those problems, and uh, that's why I totally agree with Alexei Navalny's statement that uh, this is our country, and I'm gonna go back to my motherland, and I'm not gonna stand this uh, when those uh, thieves and crooks. Uh, endless kleptocrats are uh, saying that uh, I must leave. No, they must leave. Mm. We must. Uh, we we ca we have a total right to st to live in our country and to take care of our country because they don't care. They they really care only of themselves. They, so please don't mix uh, the interests of Putin's kleptocrat regime and the Russian interests because uh, Russian authorities are not being driven by national interests at all. I want to bring uh, you back in, Mr. Sotnikov. Do you think there is a trend of clamping down on dissent in Russia? And do you think that will impact the Duma elections? Yes, I think so. That uh, most probably, uh, first of all, I would like to say that uh, we actually witnessing now the uh, continuation of the uh, Mr. Navalny saga 2.0. You know, it's, uh, and uh, uh, it could be so, analytically speaking, that uh, the, um, uh, the so-called Russian opposition is just in a, in a weak, in a weak uh, position right now. And uh, uh, Mr. Navalny probably uh, ultimate goal is to uh, for uh, taking decision to return to Russia is uh, to be a leader again of this opposition movement and we, we, we might see in the in the coming weeks what what will be the outcome of that and the secondly I would like to ask uh, my esteemed colleague Alexander the question why do you think uh, why mr. Putin president Putin didn't uh, um, uh, stopped Navalny from escaping uh, or from uh, emigrating to uh, Germany for treatment and didn't uh, actually arrest him uh, or just detain him right after this, as you put it, uh, the so-called uh, uh, alleged uh, uh, poisoning uh, of uh, him uh, uh, back in Russia. Go ahead, Alexander. Do you, do you have a response to that? Sure, uh, I'm totally, uh, I'm absolutely sure that that was in their interest uh, to uh, get rid of another opposition figure of the most prominent one. And that's always a good chance to uh, make somebody leave the country so this person does not pose any threats within the country. And uh, it's been done constantly with a lot of different uh, opposition figures. So the threats are working. Some of them are leaving the country. Uh, some of them are uh, already uh, has already left and uh, for now they're living for several years out of the country because of the criminal cases initiated against them because not everyone are ready to spend their lives in jail. Uh, Alexei Navalny was not put into jail immediately in Russia because they probably didn't want to, him to become a, a hero but now they see this uh, that all the threats they've made uh, while he's been in Berlin uh, are useless and he's he's back and uh, now the situation seems to be uh, un not under their control they don't like it and probably they will try to make something like uh, put him into prison for a short period of time and see what's going to happen next and uh, if there is no reaction uh, from people is going to uh, become uh, they if the the population will no, uh, will show no reaction he will probably uh, stay in a jail for for a pretty long period of time but anyway all the actions that are being taken by the authorities are making him a bigger hero and that sounds ridiculous from uh, i mean ridiculous the actions of the authorities are ridiculous mm. because uh, they are so mm. much afraid of any alternative view really even if the alternative view is wrong they're anyway really afraid of this alternative this is the nightmare word for the regime mr green do you agree with that that the vilification of Navalny just adds to his cause? Um, well, look, I, mean, I, I think the, the, the Kremlin has an advantage, right? It controls pretty much all the television, most of the media in the country, all of the political parties that are allowed to actually compete in parliamentary elections. Um, uh, and so, 
um, uh, it, it has the ability uh, to paint uh, Navalny the way that uh, it wants to, right? Uh, but it does seem to be doing things that then have to be explained, right? So the saga that we saw yesterday in terms of, you know, turning Navalny's airplane around in the air and and then uh, today, you know, uh, uh, having a court hearing, uh, you know, right in the uh, uh, the police station where he's been detained with about a minute's notice for his lawyer, right, uh, does not project confidence, right? Uh, and it does suggest uh, that uh, there is a degree of nervousness uh, in uh, in the Kremlin. Um, the reality is that uh, you know, autocratic regimes don't really tend to fall because they are, um, you know, brought down by a challenger from the outside. They fall because people begin to believe that the power of the autocrat is no longer inevitable, right? Um, and then that power will shift very rapidly uh, to uh, to whatever leader is uh, is available, right? So really, the, the Kremlin needs to be very careful uh, about uh, how it projects both power and weakness. Mm. Um I want to talk about the international reaction. As we said earlier, uh, in the US, in the UK, the European Union, all calling for Navalny's immediate release. Uh, Germany describing uh, Navalny's arrest as incomprehensible. Um, I want to ask uh, Mr. Sodnikov, how do you think Navalny's arrest will impact, or detention rather, will impact Russia's relations with the rest of the world? <laughs> Uh, I think the, the, the answer is very clear, actually, because uh, because of this uh, happening right now, uh, we could expect, uh, analytically speaking, more uh, adverse reactions uh, to uh, these deeds, and uh, we, can, we can expect that more sanctions, uh, and Russia is still suffering from sanctions already, uh, more sanctions uh, could be imposed, and uh, that's one thing. Another thing is that uh, the uh, relationship between uh, Russian Federation and, uh, unfortunately, and the major Western countries like the US, uh, like uh, Germany, uh, UK, uh, could be uh, spoiled uh, to the point of zero because, uh, uh, because there is uh, um, ultimately opposite positions on the Navalny case uh, in, in, in Russia and in the Western countries. But uh, just to add to that, I would like to say that, uh, uh, legally speaking, this is an internal Russian case, according to the Russian law. But uh, as international reaction, we see that uh, uh, the Russia could get away without much uh, trouble uh, after the sanctions were uh, imposed on Russia after the joining uh, with uh, Crimea. So who knows, and we will sh should see what will be in the near future if more, react if more sanctions will be imposed on Russia. Uh, I think uh, the future will show what uh, will be uh, the relationship uh, between, say, uh, President-elect Biden administration uh, coming to power in two days and what uh, will be the relationship between Russia and major Western uh, European countries. You talk about these charges uh, being the domain of, of Russia itself and of the Russian judicial system. I guess the question is, do people have faith in the Russian judi judicial system? Um, I'd like to come back to you, Mr. Soloviev. Do you think that the Russian people have the appetite to really challenge the system, to make noise, to put themselves in the way of danger to see change? Well, you know, it's it's always quite hard to predict that. Uh, we should take into consideration, of course, the whole state machine of propaganda that works uh, on one thing, on making people uh, learn helplessness. And it's doing great, uh, well, especially considering the budgets. So uh, people are, well, a lot of people know everything. Uh, but the weirdest thing that most of them are not uh, ready to go on the streets yet. Uh, though sometimes, uh, well, big protests happen in Moscow, for instance, like 100,000 people may appear in the streets. But uh, that uh, doesn't lead, uh, well, that does lead to something, but not to the, uh, not to the conditions that people uh, expected. So I do not know how people are going to react right now. Moreover, it's, it's even more important that it's minus 20 right now in Moscow, so it's quite difficult to protest in the street. Uh, so... Um, I do not know how people are going to react. Uh, and uh, the only thing I know is that they are really 
people are frustrated. People are uh, like people understand everything about the nature of this corrupted system, but uh, they keep sitting home and uh, murmuring and complaining that no matter how hard we try, we we're not going to change anything mm -hmm. because nothing depends on us. Yeah. So I'm uh, uh, very grateful to people like Alexei who continue their struggle because they show on their own example that still something is possible and we cannot just sit up and wait while mm. things change on their own. Uh, we must do something and I hope people will somehow react. Mm. There's so much more we could talk about. Unfortunately for time, we will have to leave it there. Thank you to all of our guests, Alexander Sloviev, Sam Green and Vladimir Sodnikov. And thank you too for watching. You can see the program again anytime by visiting our website aljazeera.com and for further discussion go to our Facebook page that's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story. From me Kim Vanell and from the whole team here. Bye bye for now.